Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another exciting YouTube video on this YouTube channel here today. I uh, hope you're having a fabulous morning. In today's episode, what I would like to do is to answer a very quick email that I got uh, sometime last week, I believe. And so this user is asking me, uh, how exactly do I add these nice, fancy gradient layers inside of my application? And uh, the way I'm going to answer this question is to use our previous application that we built out which you should be seeing on the left side of your screen right over here. And basically this is our stretchy blurry application where you can drag down on our UI collection view and you will introduce this blur effect here. Now I didn't exactly show you guys how to add this gradient layer along with these two labels at the very top of our header here. So what I'm going to do now is to show you exactly how this is done inside of our application right over here. So let me switch over to our code mode. And on the left side of the screen, we have our current project. Let me run this inside of the iPhone 10 simulator on the left side of the screen to show you exactly where we left off. And then let me kind of show you how to add this gradient right over here at the very top of our header, which might be a little tricky. Uh, this guy is the header view. So this very top here contains our image view, which is our header view up here. And somewhere in the initializer, we are adding this image view and filling the super view. And then we're setting up the blur right afterwards. Now down here, I'm going to actually set up the gradient layer. And let me just show you how this is done. So set up gradient layer. And over here, we are going to copy this, create a new function, file private function, set up gradient layer. Now instead of here, we are going to create a gradient layer. This guy is not that difficult to create. Uh, the couple of things on the gradient that you have to specify are the locations and also the colors. So in other words, we are going to say colors like that. And also the other property is locations. Now the colors is pretty self-explanatory, I believe. Uh, you just want to say UI color and specify the color using the CG color like that and UI color. And we are going to... Uh, specify black for the second color, so use CG color as well. Uh, locations is an array of integer values or CG floats, I believe. So let's use 0 and 1. Uh, the reason for 0 and 1 is because I want to specify the gradient somewhere up here as the clear color using 0 somewhere up here. And then all the way down here is 1. So this is the entire header view. All right. So that's pretty much how this is going to work. Now, this gradient layer, you actually have to add it to the uh, the headers, layers, add sub layer like this. And you know, just pop in this bad boy as our gradient layer. Uh, if you try to run this application right now, you're not going to see the gradient at all because you're still, uh, you still are left with the task of specifying a frame on the actual gradient layer. So you can see we don't have our gradient at all. So what I was mentioning earlier is you have to specify the frame on the gradient layer. So this guy can be anything like CG rect. Let's use the value of 0, 0, and 200, and 100. And let's try to run this guy again in the iPhone 10 simulator. Everything's executing rather quickly. And you'll see that at 0, 0, which is the origin on the top left of your simulator here, and the width of 200, or yeah, 200 by 100 gets you this little gradient box up here. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is to specify the correct frame for your gradient layer. And some of you guys might want to try to do something like this, like self.bounds or self.frame. Uh, let me try to run this and show you the effect that you'll get with this actual gradient. So this looks pretty good, right? Everything is placed correctly inside of the header view, starting from zero up here to one. If you, however, drag down on this view, you'll see that the gradient layer doesn't follow the actual uh, header sizing correctly. So what's happening is our header is growing, but the gradient layer is staying in place because we specified the frame to be exactly this right here. So it's not really moving. And it actually took me a, a while to come up with a solution that works correctly. And let me kind of show you what the solution is now. So this guy is a static frame and you know, you don't want to specify a static frame like that. So the solution is to use a container view, which might be a little confusing if you don't know exactly how to do this. Uh, let me comment out that and try to run this guy one more time. 
because we haven't added this guy as a sub layer, if you run it again, you are not going to see the gradient. And instead of using this right here, I'm going to create a container view. So container view equals uh, UI view. So nothing special about this guy. The container view is going to be my gradient container view. And let's see, the reason why I want to use a container view is because I can add this as a sub view of my header by using uh, add gradient container view. And the next thing you can do is you can anchor this guy onto the very bottom of this actual header view class. So let me just use an anchor here. Uh, I'm going to use three anchors for this bad boy. Uh, for the top, I'm going to provide a nil because I don't really want to clamp it to the top right here. Right? I just want to clamp it to the bottom down below. So this guy is going to be nil for the top and use a uh, leading for the left. And then the bottom is like that and trailing is like so. All right. so. Uh, this guy is looking pretty good. Uh, the, na the last thing I need to do is to add the layer of our gradient layer onto the actual container view. So what this is going to look like is container view layer at sub layer of our gradient layer like that. And I'll try to run this again and hopefully you will get something a little more interesting to show up in our sim layer. And you'll see that the framing isn't perfect because the gradient is appearing down here. However, as you drag up and down, you'll see that the gradient is actually clamped to the position of somewhere right here. It moves with your header view somewhere right there. So as you drag down, that's kind of what it does. Now, this frame right here isn't perfect because we're specifying the bounds like this. And I can't exactly come up with the perfect solution. So let me kind of show you a nice trick here. So this is the actual frame, right? All we have to do is bump this guy all the way back up to somewhere right here. So in other words, we want to specify the Y of this frame to be up here. And this is going to be a lot easier to understand. Obviously, when you see the code, you can say frame dot Y and you can subtract some value from it. So let's say we subtract 100 or maybe 200 will be a lot easier to see. So let's see left side mutating. And so that's not what we want. Let me say dot origin i believe that's what we need and i'll try to run this you'll see that the gradient layer is going to move upwards like so now 200 is obviously some kind of hard-coded constant we don't want to use this and instead i'm going to use the entire headers bounds so bounds dot height like that so essentially however tall this header is we're going to subtract that from the actual gradient uh, bounds layer like so and you'll see it's pretty much perfect, right? As you drag down, the gradient kind of comes down with it. Now, you'll see one thing that's not working so perfectly is that as you drag down, the animation is also blurring out the gradient layer. And you probably don't want that to, have, uh, to happen, right? You want to have the gradient sort of follow the actual header down here. And you don't exactly want to blur it out like so. Uh, the reason why it's blurring out together is because the actual visual blur is happening down here with your property animator. Uh, you might want to say something like animator.fractioncomplete equals zero. So the reason why you have to do this is a little bit tricky and it's kind of hard to explain. But basically, this guy is going to apply the blur on everything that's underneath this blur-ish layer. And the gradient is actually on top of it now. And so as you drag down, you'll see the gradient is not blurred out. If you have any questions as to why this is happening, please let me know. Uh, basically, the gradient layer is on top of the actual visual blur effect, which is this guy right here. Uh, when you specify fraction complete, you actually execute this closure. So all this is already happening before the gradient layer is being added. It's a little confusing, I do have to say. But that's kind of the solution that I have for now. If you want to take the gradient down a little bit, so you see it's really far down here, right? You can just use the value of 0 0.5 or 0 0.7. You know, whatever you want, you do have to play with these values until you're happy with the effect that you get. And so 0 0.5 kind of starts off with a clear color somewhere in the middle here. And then the one is uh, obviously at the very bottom of your header view. Okay, so that's basically how you specify your gradient if you want to have this effect. Uh, if you want to add these labels on top of your gradient, this is also pretty easy. 
uh, set up gradient layer, you can add something like right here. So I don't know. Uh, let's say the heavy label equals UI label. Uh, heavy label dot text equals uh, you know, uh, surf the web for courses or whatever you want for your label. Uh, heavy label dot font equals uh, system font, and we'll use the one that comes with weight, let's say 24, and heavy like that. Uh, next thing is to probably specify the text color uh, equals dot white, and I'll say, let's say, description label, description label. Hopefully, I'm spelling this correctly. Uh, UI label description label dot text. Uh, let's just see. Maybe I'll just copy this. You know, don't exactly want to type all this stuff over and over again, uh, but make sure to correct this whenever you do copy and pasting. And that looks pretty good uh, for this right here. You can go on to the website and buy more stuff. Otherwise, a sad puppy dies. Uh, if you don't okay so here we go description label that looks good I think I want this as the smaller font so let's use 12 and regular and the font is white okay so awesome and the last thing I need to do is to add these two labels vertically at the very bottom of our header which if you haven't done this before it might be a little confusing but it's actually really easy you just want to use a stack view and I think over the last two years, I've fallen in love with the actual stack view component, and I pretty much use it everywhere inside of my application. So heavy label, description label. Uh, I want to say stack view that axis equals dot vertical. And then lastly, we want to add this as our sub view onto the header stack view. And we're going to apply a very similar anchor. Uh, this is right here. So let me use the nil for top. Uh, leading, uh, bottom, trailing, padding, and it with the top of, let's say, 0, 16, 16, and 16. I don't think I need a size for this because these labels have intrinsic uh, heights and sizes themselves. So whenever you run this right now, you'll see that uh, the actual text is being rendered out like so. Uh, if you want to change the description to something a little bit larger, so let's change the font to 14. Uh, description label dot number of lines equals zero. Uh, this will make it so that however long your des description label is, it's going to have multi lines. And it just so happens that in this case, we have two lines like that. And as you drag up and down, you can kind of see you have your label following the very bottom of your header view like so. Uh, if you want to increase the spacing between these two labels here, you can say stack view dot spacing equals something like eight. You know, obviously whatever you want, and I'll try to run this uh, one final time and uh, we get this effect right here. Alrighty everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson. If you wanna download the source code for everything that you saw in today's video, make sure to check out uh, the source code using a link in the description below. If you want to learn how to build out this Tinder course that you're seeing inside of this application right now, uh, make sure to check out the course using the link down below as well. And that's gonna be it for today. If you wanna to subscribe to this channel, make sure to do that. And I'll see you in the very next episode. Bye-bye guys.